they're there because they want to win. And that's what people remember. And it was just such a beautiful thing for, for the season. They have GW football at a program right now. Three very strange words. Pop plays the balls. Less hits, less earned runs, less runs. Give me an NFL contract and I'll play two extra. We'll call it hazard. Theory. If anyone can spark them, it might be their coach, Mike Singletary. It's kind of a pillow fight. It's not going to be the end of the league because all the players are dead. The show is also unstoppable show because we've still got another segment left. You, unstoppable. You, stoppable today, which is, of course, the opposite of unstoppable. Uh, who's ready to play? Good morning, good afternoon, good middle of the night. This is Unstoppable. If you're looking for a movie about a runaway train, you're headed in the wrong direction. This is Channel 61 here at GW. We are Max, Chris, and Andrew back for another edition of Unstoppable here on GW TV. Five sports de uh, debate segments. We're going to cover this whole sports gamut. We hope you stick around for the entire ride. Train ride. See what I did there? All right, starting first with baseball. Are we headed toward a World Series rematch, Max? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, the Phillies are, are seem to be uh, the most potent team in the league right now. They have the best pitching staff, and we've seen so far in the division series that the, the pitching is, is, has been most important. And with Halliday, um, Hamels, and obviously Roy Oswald in between them, um, they've got the best uh, starting staff to get the job done. Um, I think the Giants are, are inex inexperienced as far as you know playoffs go, and um, you know Tim Lincecum, their pitching staff has been great. They have one of the lowest DRAs so far in the playoffs, but I think the experience of the Phillies team and their offensive power is going to get them over in the uh, NLCS. And in terms of the ALCS, um, I, I think I have to go with the Yankees. CC has the World Series experience now. They happen to be playing on the road against the Rangers, and Phil Hughes, who is now the second starter. Uh, he has better numbers on the road, and Andy Pettit is the best uh, when he plays at home at Yankee Stadium. And I don't have to name the sluggers who are on the Yankees right now. I know Texas is a good team, but I think I'm going to go with the World Series rematch. I'll agree with you with the Phillies there. Uh, the, the pitching is everything in the playoffs, and that's what scares me about the Yankees. Their Lincecum, pitching staff. Sanchez, Kane, Matt and Bumgarner is not good enough? Well, what, what, what I, they both can outlast each other, but the offense of the Phillies is better than the offense of the Giants. The Giants have an interesting composite of journeyman guys. You have Pat Burrell and Aubrey Huff and Mike Fontenot, a bunch yeah. of, of guys. And what I see happening with these pitching matchups is solo home runs by Huff, Buster Posey. That's not going to win you games. You need to produce runs. You need men on base. You need leadoff hitters like Victorino. Rollins getting on base and driven in by the other guys. Won't the Phillies offense be a little neutralized by playing at AT&T Park, though? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I th the Phillies Jason Worth leading the league in doubles. It's such a – The double-friendly yeah, park. They, 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 their, their power numbers have been down this year with home runs, but they still can hit it in the gaps and still have a great way to produce runs. What about the AL? The AL, the Yankees, I, I, I really don't trust their pitching staff as much. You have Sabathia. He's got the experience. He is the ace of the staff. He did give up four runs against the Twins last game, but Burnett, Pennant, they, they've been so inconsistent this whole season. Pettit's been very been injured off and on, and it's not as deep, I don't think, as the the Rangers Hughes have. has been surprisingly good. Yeah, I mean, he, Hughes has been Hughes good. Has been right, good he hasn't been as, as good in the second half, but, um, you know, he, he really gets to a chance to shine. Uh, he, he sees the confidence the Yankees have in him to be the number two starter, and uh, like I mentioned, his numbers are better on the road, and for Andy Pettit, while he was injured most of the second half of the season, he comes back now as a veteran, and there's no better, I think literally there's no better pitcher in the uh, MLB in the playoffs than Andy Pettit, especially at home. I think the pressure is going to be on them by the time they get to Pettit, though. Seeing tonight's Abathia versus C.J. Wilson, they've pitched surprisingly well, and I would not be surprised if the Rangers at their home field take game one, and then they have Cliff Lee in game two backing them up, and I would not be surprised if they get up 2-0 to the Yankees, because I feel like the lineup for Texas has so much chemistry. And you have, you have Andrews going with Kinsler, you have Cruz and Hamilton to drive them in. And the Yankees, you have guys who haven't been producing as much. Jeter has had all seasons. Seems like that whole team's had a, a little a bit of a down year. A little bit of a low, but I mean, at the same time, Except they, for just, they, they just swept the ALDS and they're, they're still uh, in prime position. And, and I, I mean, I think experience is a big factor. I know. I mean, it was uh, against the, the a team that offered little resistance, though. Well, I mean, I don't know yeah, about the, that. The but pitching, the pitching I, of the Twins is not the, – their ace is, is Loriano. They did yeah. not have the, the, the as good of a staff as the Texas Rangers do, oh, especially with Cliff, well, Cliff Lee I, being no. – 
yeah. the best postseason pitcher right now. Right. I think. I mean, with this, experience. it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, if you just look at relievers, I know Texas is a good reliever in, in Feliz, but you know who else would you rather have than Mariano? I'm not going with. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I'm not going with Jabba yeah, Chamberlain no debating, yeah. in the seventh and eighth inning against. Josh I'm Hamilton and Nelson Cruz and <laughs> Boone Logan, uh, Kerry Wood. I, I think they have enough tools to get the job done. And, you know, it's you will hit more home runs at Yankee Stadium. It'll happen. So um, I, I think their offense will, will be sufficient enough. And I think it, it might, might not get them to win the World Series, but get to it for sure. I think it's going to be very competitive. But I do think the Rangers have the edge pitching-wise, you know, with, with, these, with these young starters who have come out and had great years. Um, there's also the home field advantage with ballpark. Uh, Texas has uh, home field advantage, and both teams can produce runs and uh, you know hit them out of the park. So it's going to be it's going to be a high scoring uh, series. But I do think the Rangers have that chemistry and have that that have Cliff Lee as a starter, have the uh, the they don't have the experience, but have that build up to defeat the Yankees. If anyone has that, the. Um I think th I think this one it's it's really tough to to not pick against the World Series World Series rematch uh, really tough to pick against it I should say the um, it's uh, these these two teams are coming in with the momentum seemingly having both uh, done very well in the divisional series the the Giants surprisingly took two games in Atlanta uh, which could give them some forward momentum nobody picked the Giants though looks like the Phillies are the u the unanimous pick on that side. Uh, I think it's really tough after the Rangers have, have at this point accomplished so much in, the, in terms of a, a franchise year, really. This will be a year that will be remembered in Arlington for a long time. But I think it's really tough to pick them to go much, much, much further. I think you're looking at the clutch factor of those experienced guys like CC and Andy Pettit and Rivera. Those guys have been there, done that, and I think they're going to carry them through to the World Series. Whether or not they win the World Series against the, the Phils, that will be a, a tougher one to see. Um, segment one goes to Max. Uh, segment two, talking a little NFL. Um, there's a few coaches on the hot seat already this season. They, uh, there's some teams that are struggling that we didn't expect to be struggling. Who is the coach most likely to be fired in the NFL? Well, there's a lot of coaches on the hot seat right now. You got Childress, Singletary, uh, but I'm going to go with uh, Wade, da or Wade uh, Phelps. <laughs> I almost said Wade Davis. <laughs> Wade Phelps right now because uh, when you look at the Cowboys, when you go from so talented. Yeah, when you go from having the season they did last year with a with a playoffs playoff run and then going to the season where they were heralded as already the Super Bowl team before the season started and not achieve what they had, I I, I think it's it's harder for for Phillips to to not get fired compared to the other guys because they're going from winning. You have a lot of other coaches who are going from seasons and teams that have been mediocre, have been the, have been basement dwellers, that have been building up and the teams might the, the, the GMs the front office might be uh, better to uh, to keep their guys there and see where it builds. But after they've been winning, and then you have this season. What about Childress though? They ousted uh, the Cowboys in the playoffs last year. Had a had a better year. We're almost in the Super Bowl. You know, yeah. aren't his expectations incredibly high as well? His, since Brett his Favre expectations came back? are incredibly high. Um, I think they're they're going to see where it goes with Favre though. I wouldn't be surprised to see him leave at the end of the season if Favre left. But on hot seat right now, I think Phillips is more likely to be fired. Uh, right, right now, before before Childress, he also has the toughest buildup. They still have to play New Orleans. They still have to play Indy. They still have to, you know, play play marquee teams for the rest of the season. And the FC East is very, you know, difficult. Yeah, I I think Wade Phillips is a good answer too. And I, I think I'll keep I'll stay in the NFC East for now. Uh, I think Tom Coughlin has to be worried about his job too. Um, I know the Giants are three and two right now. I am a Giants fan, but <laughs> the, um, the the Giants have they played well the past couple weeks, but they played kind of scary so far this season too. And they won the Super Bowl a couple years ago. They missed the playoffs last year. And, you know they had Earth, Wind, and Fire, the, the whole running back scheme. Um, but you know, it's really let, let's That's look really let's look what's happened. Yeah. Uh, they they don't have. Uh, I guess fire. I don't know who it is anymore. <laughs> uh, Brandon Jacobs can't do anything, and Ahmad Bradshaw has to carry the load. And except for some portions of the past two weeks, their running game has been non-existent, and that's what Giants football is. You saw when Plaxico Burris shot himself. Um, <laughs> Hakeem Nix is, is really stepping up right now, but I mean they, they could have definitely used him as another star receiver there. And Eli Manning, Manning has, has, he still has some growing pains as well. Um, you know, I, I think if the conti the season could continue well for them, but if it doesn't, um, there, there seems to be no discipline on this team where he preaches discipline so much. Being to practice uh, 15 minutes early is on time. Uh, you know their players are calling out. Jacobs doesn't want to play 